and welcome to Grandad Reviews. Initially, I was going to do this video as a complete review of the XS10, but there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube at the moment going over the XS10, all the specifications and everything else, and I thought, no, I won't do that. I'll do something different. I'll look at the features that I found that are different from the XT30 and the XT3, because that's where I'm coming from. And some of the things I prefer over those cameras and some I don't. And some of the setup, different settings you can do on these now. So what I thought I'd go over first, and I'll throw in a few likes and dislikes as well, is the custom settings on this top dial and as you probably know you've got four custom settings on here C1 to C4 plus all the other usual settings I thought I'd go how to go through how to set them up for a start and then some of the things you should look out for so the easiest way to set these custom settings is if you're in a specific setting on the dial so let's say I'm in aperture priority and I've set the camera how I want to use it in aperture priority. I've set the uh, autofocus, drive speed, um, <clears throat> ISO setting, uh, my film simulation and I've actually gone through the menu and set up all these things going through the IQ, the AFM, all those. And you think, oh, that'd be nice as a custom setting. If you just go to the IQ menu and come on down to page three, and you've got edit and save custom settings. If you go in there, you've got save current settings. And what this will do, it will allow you to save those current settings into whichever slot you want to put it into. So that's one of the, the quickest ways of doing it. The other way, which is not necessarily quicker, but I found it a little bit easier to do as well, is yes, save your current settings, put it into whatever slot you like. Um, you can edit the name of that custom setting so you can see what it is. You then can go in to edit check settings. So you pick the actual setting, the C setting you're going to use. So let's say C1, which I've renamed Aperture Single Focus. And you can go in and now you can double check and probably change a few things. So you can change the shooting mode. You can even set a preset aperture where you're going to start off from, exposure compensation, your drive mode. But then you can also go into the IQ menu, you know, page one, so you can do all these settings, change those to how you want to, go into the AF settings, change all those how you want to, and you can change most of the things on here. So go into your camera settings. If you had a flash you can change some of the flash user settings you can't change any of those you about the shooting mode and when you go back it'll ask you do you want to save those settings when you can just go okay and you've done it now the other thing on here and I'll come back to the setting but if we go out of this and we're into and we use C1. So on in C1, so it's it's set everything I've set in C1 is now set up on the on the camera. We're in aperture priority, AFS, AFS, um, ISO auto three, and it's all set. I think, oh, I want to change. I'll put want to put let's say the timer on, self timer. 
So I go into my Q menu where I've got my self timer on, come down to self timer, and we'll change it to two seconds. You may notice a red dot. You think, what does that red dot mean? I'll ignore it for now. You've got your self timer on, which is fine. Go back to off, it's off. So then you might change, right, let me change white balance. I'm going to change it to Kelvin, a really silly red dot. Got a strange white balance, but I use it. Now you've finished doing that, you're finished with the camera. We'll switch the camera off. Still in C, C1. I'll switch the camera on. And oh, that white balance has gone back to C1. So C1, whenever you change something, if you switch the camera off, whatever you've changed will go back to what the original C1 setting is. But you can change that. So if we go back into the menus, then three, edit, save, and we've got this auto update setting here. And you've got disable or enable. We'll enable it. Come back out. We're going to a Q menu now. Let's change the self timer. Ah, no red dot. The red dot is telling you that that setting won't be saved to C1. Whenever you come back to C1, it'll go back to whatever you've set in C1. Now it's saying that that setting is now saved to C1. But if we turn the camera off, turn it back on, I come back into C1, ah, my self timer is still on. So in there, the auto update settings, disable, enable. If you enable it, if you change a setting, it'll update that custom setting that you've sent. It'll overwrite whatever you've put in there. So if you put in, you don't want the self timer on, and you've got auto update enabled, you go in to the Q menu or whatever, put the self timer on while you're in C1 or C2, C3 or C4, it will save that for you. So if you want that to do so that you think, oh, this is a better setting, it will auto save that for you. And as I say, you can edit your custom name if you want on there. The custom settings on the XS10, I think, uh, are very useful. Certainly more useful than the custom settings in the XT30 and the XT3, where you can barely change anything, to be honest. With this, you can actually set it all up how exactly how you want it. I've got C1 as aperture priority with autofocus single and ISO auto at 64, high of 6400, low of 160. Then C2 I've got exactly the same except I've got continuous autofocus. And in C3 I've got it in manual with single autofocus and C4 manual with continuous autofocus. So I can quickly change from any of those. So it's just a shame you can't save the video settings in there as well. But there's a lot of settings you can save, so just dive in and have a look and see if the auto enable is a feature you want to or not. But you can switch it off at any time you want and rename them to whatever you need. The only downside is the names don't pop up when you change the dial. So I know C1 doesn't come up and tell me that's what I've named it. If you've got your custom settings in the only time you see it really is when you go into the custom settings, edit and check, then you've got, got them in there. So I say you can save the current settings into any of the blocks, so whatever you've set, stick them into there. Edit and check them, just to make sure they're correct, and if you want to do any changes, auto update the settings, as I say, change anything. While you're in one of the custom settings, it'll remember that change. Edit your custom settings, or you can reset them all to whatever. So that's my look at custom settings on the XS10. Very useful, very handy. There is one thing I miss off this, 
on this that it is on the XT3 and that's the extra function button on the front here. I used to have that set up for Iron Face Detect. That's a shame. But other than that, no, enjoy it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. That helps the channel. Until next time, see you later.